Following the release of the much-anticipated World Update 6, Microsoft Flight Simulator have issued a hotfix to version 1.19.9.0, and within that hotfix are a number of issues of interest to VR users. These are primarily the fix to the broken night lighting, the off-screen pre-cache option now available in VR, and some general crash fixes. OpenXR development tool has had a number of minor updates, so I thought it was time to revisit my settings again, and take the opportunity to share these with you. This video applies directly to those VR headsets using the Windows Mixed Reality interface, and doesn't cover Oculus, Pimax, or Steam setups. So I've been doing my multiple flight tests, and longer term subscribers will be familiar with my stress test. We're in Chicago with photogrammetry on, and we're departing from the infamous Meg's Field from Z Design Studios. Highly detailed payway scenery, and there's a freeware option available as well. Link to my review video of this excellent scenery in the notes below. We'll be flying through the heart of downtown Chicago in our Beechcraft G36. This is one of the default aircraft from Osobo, featuring high levels of detail and excellent PBR rendering and two G1000 panels in the cockpit to add further stress to the system. Today the focus is more on the settings rather than where to find them, so if you're looking for more details, then check out my video VR Optimization Settings Updated, and there's additional videos on VR which may be of help to you. I'll leave links to all of these in the notes below the video. Welcome to the Sim Hangar, my name's Mark, thanks for watching, and let's get started. All the settings shown in this video are based on my 10900K PC specification, but I also have an 8700K with a 2080Ti, and I've done the same tests on that system. So from time to time, when going through my settings and recommendations, I will make reference to the 2080Ti system. That's Chicago dead ahead, plenty of water around, so the system has to deal with multiple reflections. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, so I'm getting a good cast of shadow. Let's start where I finished up and have a look at the settings that I finally chose. These are what I call my set and forget settings. They're the ones that gave me a good balance between performance and graphics fidelity, regardless of where I'm flying or what I'm flying. With these settings, I can freely change scenery and aircraft and still be assured of good performance. My in-sim render scaling is set at 100, as is terrain level of detail and object level of detail. Under the advanced settings, the third item down is the new entrant, off-screen terrain pre-caching. And from my test, I'm of the opinion this is a big hitter in terms of FPS. The settings are low, medium, high and ultra. What it does is preload and pre-render part of the scenery that you may not be looking at on screen at that particular time. So if you do look, well it's going to be displayed faster and reduce the amount of popping. That became so evident after Sim Update 5. The different levels of off-screen terrain pre-caching determine the amount of data allocated and the amount of computing power allocated to this task. Even with my 3090 system, I've had to compromise by moving the building and trees down to medium. For my 2080 system, having this setting at Ultra was just too big of a compromise in terms of other settings, and I had to turn this down to medium or high. Medium would be my set and forget setting. You should also be aware that the amount of terrain level of detail and object level of detail will impact on the setting and the amount of popping that you experience, thus my setting at 100. Again, caution is advised in terms of level of detail selected, bearing in mind the resolution available to you in your headset. Otherwise, you're getting a performance crush with little visible benefit. What I have noticed is there is a big improvement in terms of the amount of popping that you experience, but it's not eliminated completely. And scenery morphing when flying through mountains, it's still there. If you've got settings similar to the above and you're struggling for performance, look to turn down your texture resolution, water waves and your ambient occlusion. They all have an impact on your FPS. The other new entrant is ray marched reflections. Previously, this was labeled just reflections. And to be honest, I can't see any significant difference at all. So they may just have renamed this. 
from what I understand from Ray March to reflections, which is not a lot, it changes the way in which a reflection is cast and its translucency, but happy to be corrected on this point. So these are my general set and forget VR settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're now flying over Chicago downtown and I'm happy with the performance that I'm getting and you can judge it for yourself. My actual FPS is pretty similar to what I was getting after Sim Update 5, as shown in my VR performance video. Cast your eyes to the horizon and you can see I'm getting a reasonably good draw distance. It's a definite improvement following the hotfix. Now through the two tower blocks and dropping down low as this is a great way to test your FPS. If you're going to get lots of micro pauses and stutters, this is where you're going to get it when you're low to the ground and banking. However, please bear in mind I am recording this as well as being in VR at the same time. I'd also like to comment that when you're doing your tests for VR and you're just starting off, allow the aircraft to settle for some time. And that applies whether you're sat at an airport or you're starting in midair. I would suggest give it a minute, perhaps two minutes, just to settle down and preload everything to give you a more realistic expectation in terms of what that setting's giving you. Use the time to use multiple views. Judging it straight off from the get-go can be very confusing and make finding the right settings next to impossible. We'll now be turning back and doing a low flight through the buildings in Chicago. And unlike being in 2D or screen mode, this is not about FPS overall. It's about how smooth it feels to you. With my system, could I turn the systems way up? Yes, I can. But I don't want to make that compromise in terms of smoothness. Everybody has a different expectation. Just shaking my head to make sure I'm not getting black borders and any tearing. You've got to find what's right for you. Let's turn now to my other settings. First of all, game mode is off on both my 2080 Ti and my 3090 system. I have HAGS or Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling switched to on, but that's because I've got a 30 series graphics card. If you've got a series 10 or series 20's graphics card, you should have it off, as it will increase the amount of stutters that you experience. I am of course using an NVIDIA graphics card, not an AMD, and I'm also using GeForce Experience, which I use for screen capture as well. I'm using the latest NVIDIA driver at the time of recording, which is 471.96. And now let's take a quick look at my graphic NVIDIA settings. Open up your NVIDIA control panel, and from the menu select Manage 3D Settings. Then select the second tab, Program Settings. And then select Microsoft Flight Simulator. If it's not there, you can add it by selecting the Add button and browsing to the .exe file on your C drive. Everything is at default except the Power Management mode where I have it set to Prefer Maximum Performance. This does make a difference for me. For my 2080 Ti system, the texture filtering quality I change to high performance, and I would do this for any Series 10 or Series 20 graphics card. For my 2080 Ti system, it does make a difference. For my 30 Series graphics card system, I see no difference at all. So I leave texture filtering quality set at default. When testing out your VR system and choosing your settings, make sure you also try it at night. This puts a very different load on your system and it'll help you fine tune the settings that you want. And if you're like me, where you want to set it and forget it till the next major update, it's a necessary step. I actually do two tests, one at dusk, like now, and one when it's night. It's also a good idea to do a test when it's raining. One of the crucial and important settings is in Windows Mixed Reality. And these settings can have a big impact, positive or negative, on the performance that you're experiencing. Let's take a quick look at my settings. Bring up your Windows settings and then choose Mixed Reality. From the submenu presented, select Headset Display. The first settings are the settings for the Microsoft Home. And unless you're a content creator and using the mirror, I would recommend you leave them at medium and 720p. 
They're the least demanding on the system, but they won't affect your flight sim performance. However, under experience options, you've got optimize for performance. Make sure that that is selected. What this does is disable the VR mirror. With it enabled, you've got another screen running in the background potentially. Let me show you what I mean. I'm now bringing up the Mixed Reality Portal and that's the screen you should be seeing. It's a static display. If we now change this to Best Visual Quality, the Windows Mixed Reality Portal now displays exactly what you're seeing in your headset. And as you move around, it will replicate your view. If you're in Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, it would reflect what you're seeing in there as well. But this is another process running in the background and will degrade your performance overall. It's fairly obvious if you're in this mode and you can see it by this small icon. If you click on that, it will bring up the right eye view, which content creators often use for VR videos. And this view is representative of what you see in the headset, including resolution by and large. What you don't want is this running in the background unintentionally. And the quickest and easiest way is simply change the setting to optimize for performance. Don't choose let Windows decide either. Well, I think it's time for a landing. Windows Mixed Reality uses the OpenXR interface for VR. And if you're using Windows Mixed Reality, you should be using the OpenXR development tool. This is a free download from Microsoft Store and gives you greater control over your settings for VR. Once downloaded, keep it up to date and pin it to your taskbar. To update it, go to Microsoft Store, click on these three dots and then Download and Updates. This will then indicate everything that's downloaded and there you can see on my system is OpenXR Development Tools for Windows Mixed Reality. Click on Updates and if there's any updates, which there's not in my case, it will automatically update them there and then. I have the latest version of the runtime installed as indicated on screen. And here are my current settings under the Developer Settings tab. I have the latest preview OpenXR runtime enabled. I have the custom render scale set at 70%. 70% is a good starting point, and if your system can handle more depending on your in-sim settings, you can change them accordingly. I'm actually running at 80%, but that's because both my CPU and graphics card are overclocked, and most people's aren't. And I have motion projection disabled. The other option for motion reprojection is always on or automatic. Here's a very quick explanation on what motion reprojection does and why it can help. Headsets need 90 frames per second to run smoothly. If due to either hardware or software limitations, you're not capable of achieving that, then the experience in the headset's going to be unpleasant and very jumpy. Motion reprojection attempts to compensate this by putting in additional frames between the first and second frame to help you achieve the 90 frames per second. So in essence, if you're struggling to get the performance that you need with too many pauses and stutters, well then motion reprojection should be on. Having motion reprojection on, however, does have a few penalties. There is a very slight reduction in visual quality. And the sim will be more prone to visual anomalies, or artifacts as we call them. Here I've got motion reprojection on and you can see some distortion when looking through the prop. You may also see some anomalies, such as if you look at the leading edge of the wing. There's a slight ghosting effect, especially when low and slow. You should test your system with motion reprojection both on and off. And don't discount having motion reprojection on out of hand. Despite some of the anomalies mentioned, motion reprojection can enhance your performance and give you a much smoother flight and let you turn up settings which otherwise you wouldn't be able to do. We've been flying at night for a while and by and large they seem to have solved the floating light problem, although it's still an issue here and there. Since World Update 6 and the patch, I've not had any crash to desktops. But my VR experience hasn't been totally problem free. Sometimes, but not always, when I exit VR and go back to the 2D monitor and then attempt to go back into VR, well, the sim can't see the headset. It says OpenXR is not running. And I'm using an HP Reverb headset. 
If you've experienced this problem, please let me know in the comments below or is it something particular to my system? If you're also getting this problem, the one way I've found to reduce the frequency of this happening is to start the Windows Mixed Reality portal before I start the sim. And lastly, when making changes in the OpenXR development tool, I suggest you restart your sim as changing settings on the fly doesn't always work. Thanks very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Take care, everybody. Look after yourselves. I'll catch you on the next one and bye for now.